What's up developers and welcome back to a new video where we will dive into model validation in Symfony. Quick pause. Do you want to support the channel and want me to continue on creating content? You can support the channel on Patreon right now where you get benefits just as a private Discord group where you can share your coding issues and other developers will help you out. If you are interested to join, the link will be in the description down below. When it comes to web applications, securing incoming data is quite important. Symfony offers quite a few ways on how you could validate incoming data. You can either do it manually, or you can use the form type validation that we have already pulled in in the last few videos. If we try to create a movie right now, without adding values inside the input fields, so let's hit submit, you'll see that by default, Symfony Forms adds the required tag on an input field. Now this is all right when you create your low level applications, but it's not the most secure way. We're dealing with client side code right here, which is not the safest way. Therefore, it's always good to rely on security checks. A hacker can easily just remove the required tag from the input field and submit something empty, or even maybe something you don't want to see being submitted. Now the best possible place to start with your validation is right inside of your entity, where you can add something which is called a validation constraint on your properties. The reason why we start at our entity is because we want to validate an object once data comes in. So let's navigate back to Visual Studio Code. Let's open the Entities folder and our Movie Entity. Now we've got our title, release year, description, and image path properties, and we honestly don't want to keep them empty. Now a quick note, you can add validation on public, protected, or private properties. It doesn't matter. Inside the default annotations of our title, we've got our ORM, which is saying that the type is string and the length can maximum be 255. Now let's go right after it and hit enter. It already follows up with annotations. And let's start off with a simple check right here, where the title cannot be empty. So what we need to do is to say another add sign, assert, backslash, not blank, in Pascal case. Next to checking whether it can be empty or not, you can also define the minimum and maximum length of an input field. This can simply be done by adding another assert right after a not blank. So let's say add assert, backslash, length, which accepts parentheses right after it, and inside the parentheses, we should add a minimum or maximum. Now let's say that we want a minimum, which is equal to three. Now let's do the same thing for our release here, but only the not blank. So let's copy it and let's paste it right here. Also for our description, now let's do the same thing for our image path. We did just add assert constraints on our properties, but if we try to output it in the browser right now, our assert cannot be found since we need to make sure that we import it first. So let's navigate to the top, and right below our doctrine use statement, let's add a new one of symphony, backslash, component, backslash validator, backslash constraints, as assert. Adding this does not magically add validation on your model. If we navigate back to Google Chrome, refresh the page, as you can see, it's giving us an error message, and I can tell you why. If we navigate back to Visual Studio Code and open our composer.json file, now let's search in here for something which is called assert. As you can see, no results have been found. So what we need to do is to import it through the CLI. So let's say composer, require, symphony, forward slash, validator, space, doctrine, forward slash, annotations. Let's hit enter. All right, it's pulling everything in. If we navigate back to Google Chrome, refresh the page, and as you can see, our create page is visible right now. Now, if we try to submit it one more time, you'll still see that the required tags are still available. So what we need to do is making sure that we turn the required attribute off. So let's navigate back, open our movie form type, and let's scroll up to our title. And right after our label, let's say required, and the value is false. Well, let's copy it because we're going to add it for our release here as well, and also for our description, and also for our image path. Save it, let's navigate back, refresh the page, click on submit, and as you could see, we're getting an error message right here saying that the value should not be blank. Now if we try to create a new movie, so let's say test, a release year of 2010 and a description of test. Let's choose an image. I've got Hulk again, submit it. 
and as you can see, we are able to create a new movie. Now the same thing goes for editing a movie. If we click on keep reading, scroll down, edit the movie. Now let's actually remove all values that we have and try to submit it. Now at the moment, we're getting an internal server error with a status code of 500, which is something you should try to avoid at all costs. Now what's going on right here? Since our forms of creating and editing looks exactly the same. If we navigate to our movie entity and scroll down, to our setters, all right, I have my set title right here. You'll see that the set title is required to accept a string called title. This means that it is required to pass in a value and not null. And if we look at our error message, you see that we're passing in null right now. When you try to validate something, it will call the set title first or set release here and so on. In PHP, we can use nullable types. This can be done by prefixing the data type with a question mark. So right in front of string, let's add a question mark. Let's do the same thing for our release here. Description already has it because it's optional. And image path as well, let's add it there as well. Save it. Let's navigate back to Chrome. Refresh the page. Click on continue. And as you can see, the value should not be blank has been printed out. Now the last validation that we added was for the title where we had a minimum length. So let's add two letters, submit it. And as you can see, we're getting two error messages right now. The first one is the value is too short. And the second one is that it should have three characters or more. Now this was it for this video where I showed you how you could add simple validation on your form type we've created. In the next video, we will be diving into authorization in Symfony. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.